soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. You are about to embark upon the Great Crusade. Okay, my full name is Dorothy, and I went. In a, my maiden name is Taft, T-A-F-T, but my married name is Barry, B-A-R-R-E. Who were you with during World War II? What outfit? What? 16th General Hospital, and it was started at uh, Fort Devens in uh, Massachusetts. Now, were you a nurse? Yes. And I was a nurse when I went in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they needed the nurses, and we went in. <laughs> that was the thing to do. Well, I was going to ask, what made you decide to go into the Army? Oh, uh, well, I tried the Navy, but they didn't take me because of my eyes, so the, the Army took me. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. We went um, in December of 43, so we were, New Year's Day, we were on the high seas, you know, and we landed like... January 10th or something in Liverpool. So when we got over there, whether there was, anyway, we were met with all kinds of photographers. And we were on movie, Fox movie tone news or something. Our, our group was, <laughs> yeah. And that picture, or those pictures that were taken, um, uh, um, was in the paper, you know, and yeah. And my sister saw me on the movie tone news. <laughs> yeah, she picked me out. <laughs> there was a group of us that went to, we were invited to Lady Penny's estate. P E N N Y, possibly yes. But she had uh, refugee children. So, you know, they sent a lot of children from London even to the United States, to protect them from the bombs. The families didn't want them to get killed, so they were either sent to some states out in the country, or some came over the United States. Yeah. At the time, you know, we didn't know about that, but. Later, I heard that, you know, some of those children came back and hardly knew their parents, which must have been sad. Get used to that. But I remember going to Lady Penny's estate. She, she, was, in any, she was like a little bee woman with, like, house dresses or something. But she had these children, and we held them and talked to them. And she must have had some kind of a lunch for us. I remember that. And then... Then we went across the channel in August. I don't remember. But it took us a couple of days to get across that channel. And not narrowly, it's <laughs> hours. I think it was very rough. And, and the food wasn't too good, and we decided the bread was pretty good, and then we found out the bread was wormy. <laughs> but we went on there too long. <laughs> Do you know which beach you came on to? Utah. Yeah. Some people said we waited in. I don't really remember that. We might have gotten a little water <laughs> from the landing boat, you know, because we went from the ship to the landing boat and landing craft and then went in. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when we got on the shore, um, we, we ca always carried K rations with us, which were like a box. So if we got hungry, we could open one of them. And then we. Then they loaded us in trucks, and they didn't know where we were to go and what. So finally, they found some place that took us in, and at 10 o'clock at night, we got a big dinner or something, and then they said, go out in the field and lay down. So we just went out in the field. Now, Hope remembers this tent shelter. I don't remember that. <laughs> there might have been some out there. So that was our first night. And then they... Then they got us into the field in Normandy, and they'd set up tents for us there. So we, there were about 30 in a tent. You know, the, you had to be careful of the fields. They told you not to go out in the fields too much because of the bombs that had been there. Were they concerned about mines? And yes, yeah. And things like that? But they said they had been checked, the fields around us, but they had to, we still were told to be careful and not wander. So we weren't allowed to 
go off the base. Yeah, well, we had, it was just a big field, and they put up several tents, and, um, and again, we, we, might, we did a lot of matching. I think we were able to play soccer there, not soccer, um, you know, over the net, the balls. <laughs> yeah, we played that, and they kept us busy with, uh, they'd have lectures and, you know. Otherwise, we had free time. Sit, we would sit out, I've got pictures sitting outside the tent, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one of my friends, Ann, was modeling long johns. <laughs> we make our own. <laughs> and there we had slit trenches, too. Yeah, you know, they just slit in the ground, in a camouflage net around. Well, and the, and the, and the shelter, tent shelter around, uh, you know, gave you privacy, but it was just a slit trench. <laughs> I don't know how much they could see. But that was the only bathrooms we had. And, and then about after about four weeks, I think they decided we needed showers. You see, with our helmets, we would get where they were set up for meals. The third rinse was like warmer, and we could get that in our, back, in our helmets and use it for washing, bathing ourselves, washing our underwear. After a meal, you know, we rinsed our mess pans in soapy. We dip them in the soapy water, and then there were about three rinses that we rinsed them in, and that and that was it. And then they they dried by themselves. And then the, so we were in Normandy for about six weeks, but then we went on to Belgium. They put us on trains to transport us. One day it was like five miles, but see, they had to clear the track. We're still going through a territory that had just been taken over by the Americans. Yeah. And in Belgium, where we, Liège is where we ended up, or outside of Liège. In Liège, which was a good sized city, they had just been freed 9 11 <laughs> of 44, September 11th. Is that right? And so we got there in October. Yeah. They, they put, now I don't know where the men were, but they put us uh, above a, I think it was a bank, uh, and so we had rooms, and there might have been three or four in the room I was in, and the first day we got there, I think I'd taken a nap, or, and uh, I heard a commotion, and outside they were... Um, shaving a couple of girls' heads, and then they uh, put Nazi swastika on top, uh, and that was because they had consorted with the Germans, supposedly. I don't know if I've heard different things. I think we were like five or six miles outside of Liège, and what they did was they just found a big field, and that's where they set up our hospital. In a month's time, the men had... I don't know how they did it. They had a, a set up for a thousand patients, for dentists, uh, you know, surgery. A lot of it was tense, you know. And the nurses were billeted in a chateau, they called with a moat around it. <laughs> Huge thing. And I was on the third floor, and we I think there was at least six people in we just had cots in the room with pot-bellied stoves, you know. We got there in October 44, and the boat started December 16th, you know. Do you remember hearing about the breakthrough? Oh, no. We didn't, at least, uh, maybe I was naive, but I never heard. What, we just knew we were close to the fighting. Since then, we've heard we were 12 miles within. So that's why we became more of a, a back hospital or a holding hospital. What do you remember about being there in Belgium with the Battle of Poets? What, what, what do you remember about that? Um, the buzz bombs came over night and day. They would stop them like 10 o'clock at night and start them about 
one o'clock in the morning when you're trying to get to sleep. That's that's the way they did it, you know, to keep you awake and keep the civilians and everybody. And if they, and you'd hear the motors of the V1s, and when that stopped, then you wondered where they were going to crash. Because when they hit a house, it was demolished. Yeah. So in our enlisted men's area where they were staying, there were three buzz bombs that hit that area. And luckily, no one was killed. But it got so the men either slept in foxholes or came up on the wards. And, and it was lucky the wards didn't get hit by buzz bombs. But we were straight. Christmas Eve, we were straight by a German pilot. Well, I was not on duty, but um, there were no, there were two men killed, and some of the patients were wounded, re-wounded, because one fellow said, I'd rather be up front than here. <laughs> it was cold, and because the boats, that was, you know, a lot of the guys were frozen, and we had a lot of frozen feet, and, and then uh, we had snow, you know, and they had to keep pots open and stuff like that. There was a lot of snow. We got patients just wrapped in army blankets. Um, they had taken the clothes off probably because they were either frozen <clears throat> or all bloodied or something. And the initial dressings had been done. And so when we would get like 30 patients, uh, and there was one nurse, but we had corpsmen, you know, and we'd get them. First thing we did was get them all washed up, get pajamas on them, feed them. So the mess hall was working night and day because sometimes it'd be 10 o'clock, you'd get a whole lot of patients and they'd feed them and uh, get them cleaned up, pajamas, clean them. And then we'd medicate them if they needed medication and reinforce their dressings and get a, I guess a chart had been started. There were little charts and we pinned them to the pajamas. And if they were started on penicillin or sulfur, and I think that was decided by a doctor, then we painted P or S and gentian violet on their foreheads so that that would be continued. And then they were sent to either Paris, I suppose they were flown out from some airport, to or England for further treatment. Now, the Germans never got close to where your hospital was, were they? Were they? Within 12 miles, they said. But, well, and in Liège, you know, what they did was some of them took uh, u American uniforms and dropped into Liège, then pretended they were Americans working behind the lines. Um, I think it was in January this buzz bomb came out. Now, I don't know if it was, it might have been when the V-2 was in, and whether somebody saw it and they said, get out of the cots or something. That was the only time that I went under a cot or somebody's cot. Uh, I don't know where. Yeah, we must have gone under the beds. That was the only place we, you know, thinking it was a shelter. And all I can remember was one guy was shaking away, and I, I hugged him. And then after it was over, we just went on our way. <laughs> and it was... Help me too, I guess. <laughs> but I remember he was shaking so much. I thought. Some of the guys, you ever seen any guys that were shell shocked or anything? Or they may have went to Central Psychiatric War. Yeah, and, and I think maybe afterward, when they first came to us, they were so thankful to, to be back where they were getting shelter and food and out of the cold and that we didn't notice those signs. Some of those signs, I think, happened later. What about, um, and I know this was pretty common during the Battle of the Bulge, so frostbite. Well, we had a lot of frostbite. Yes. To, um, well, frozen feet, you know, yeah. so frozen legs. And you had to be careful not to get them too near the stoves, you know, with their cots, because that caused the pain. Well, a lot of it was shrapnel or, or they were shot, you know, um, fro frozen too, you know. There is a couple M&Ms, the Belgium M&Ms they call them. Um, Marcel was like three or four years old during the war, but he lived on a 300-year-old farm and then he married um, Matilda and their names are Schmidt, and they started a museum because he has 300-year-old farms, so the barn 
and the shed. Uh, it's a wonderful museum. Remember Museum, it's called. And he, in fact, and he was a master mechanic, so he fixed up an old um, army truck because a lot of stuff was left in the woods around their place. They didn't bring it back, you know. And a jeep. And I've been over. Uh, I was over in 2008, and uh, he had a sign on the truck. You know? <laughs> yeah. And they've got a lot of. Uh, and he's painted uh, backdrops of snow. And I and then he has mannequins with the army uniforms and wow. yeah it's really a wonderful. Did your husband did he serve in World War Two? Yes, but he never talked much about it, and I wished I'd asked him more. We we didn't get married till later in life. I was forty two when I got married. Um, he was with the hundred and first, and he the thing he mentioned to me was he went in on D Day at a, in a glider, and he said not many made it. And he said they would take him as a French peasant because he spoke French fluently. He also, I think languages came easy because he learned German and he spoke German fluently. And he spoke some Russian. So after the war, he worked out of the embassy in Paris for about seven or eight years. So I didn't meet him till after that. Yeah, I can remember going back to Normandy and I went up with the in a truck, and there were probably two or three of us anyway. But some guy walking along, walking, he was an American soldier, you know. That's what we're fighting for, and we were in the truck. And made us feel so good. <laughs> yeah, made, us, made us feel good.